such uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this this uh, um, invitation came about from a mutual friend uh, um, who uh, is a professor of comparative linguistics at the University of the Negev in Israel. He told me that um, Gottfried Wagner was visiting Malta and I took the opportunity to uh, invite him on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and on behalf of the University Sister Society to give this memorial lecture which we hold at about this time of the year. And I was uh, delighted that he accepted. Um, we decided on a subject for the lecture which is not simply uh, musical, musicological but which is also eminently historical and political uh, because uh, Germany is one of the topics which um, my students read in European political development do every year uh, so this is directly related to the European political development course at the university as well and one question which we always ask ourselves and which we have not uh, come up with a fully satisfactory answer yet uh, to, to it is, is um, how did the Holocaust happen? Why did it happen? Uh, how is it that in the heart of, of Europe, in, in the land of, of Schiller, of Goethe, you have a mass genocide of this uh, kind? Uh, so, um, what uh, I asked um, uh, Dr. Wagner to uh, to try and do today is to link up, although there is no, uh, no direct, perhaps not no um, continuous linearity, but to link up Richard Wagner and his thoughts, as well as his music, his writings, as well as his music, music to, um, to Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich. Um, as I said, this is a very difficult, complex uh, topic, uh, which is still very, uh, in a way, sensitive and, and complex. And, uh, but um, when one reads uh, certain uh, mentalities and expressions which characterize the, the interwar period, uh, the mind boggles. Um, for example, if you look at uh, the documentary history uh, on Nazi culture by George Moss, you, you come across uh, certain statements, beliefs expressed uh, by, by these, these uh, German uh, ideologues, fanatics, uh, which um, out of uh, context, of historical context, are almost impossible to understand. For example, uh, I can just think of one sentence by one of them. The Jew is not a human being. And one, one attempt, I think, serious, very serious attempt at trying to place this whole problematic in, in context um, has been made by Fritz Stern, who uh, um, Fritz Stern is, is uh, 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 something of a household name to people of my generation because one of his books was a textbook when we were reading history or other historiography. Uh, it is very good of history which he edited. Uh, I, I had the pleasure actually of dining with him in Berlin a few years ago in the European Intellectual Summit. But the more important book which seeks to explain how this came about is has um, the politics of cultural despair. And in the politics of cultural despair, Stern, in which Wagner, I must say, figures quite a bit, also tries to uh, see, uh, see the whole uh, thought, uh, schools of thought, not even one school of thought, but going back to the 19th century, of course, and even uh, beyond it, because anti-Semitism, as you know, has a long, has a long pedigree. So we're in post Weimar Weimar Germany after the war, after the defeating war, and nationalism, of course, is on the rise. The totalitarian state comes into being in Italy, in, in Bolshevik Russia, and then in Italy, and subsequently in Germany. Uh, on the musicological aspect, uh, Gottfried Wagner is very much more knowledgeable, so I wouldn't even dare to, to approach it. But uh, one, I think one of the questions about uh, Wagner is, in fact, to what extent, uh, to what extent uh, the anti Semitism, which is in some of his writings, very blunt, uh, is also reflected in his music work. Patrick Wagner, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for the invitation. Of course, I'm honored to speak here at a very distinguished university. Um, I present here as the first image here Richard Wagner, which is a picture 
should have a look at this picture. It's a very famous picture from Richard Wagner by the French photographer Jules Bonnet of 1867, uh, which already, by seeing this man and his face and his attitude, uh, shows, of course, a very illogical man, very, also very important to know that Wagner himself was very tiny, nearly dwarf like. So, um, just to get in, uh, I think it's important to really also lay down, coming back to this picture and explain it more clearly. Um, as you said so clearly, Henry, before, uh, Wagner is a very complex topic. Indeed, Wagner is, a, is an interdisciplinary discussion, and of course, in, also especially when you talk about the topic from Richard Wagner to Adolf Hitler. So, there are different aspects which I'm always concentrating on the most essential points because I cannot give here a seminar and I think everybody would leave the hall immediately. So what makes us make Wagner really unique in the history, not so the history of music and even generally in history? So uh, let's have the second image, now starting with this, and concentrating here on a, on a picture already on the last page of Parsifal. This is the original score ended by Richard Wagner in Palermo, 27th of December, 1881. Why do I show it to you? Because I mean, I concentrate in combination with all the discussion with Hitler. Parsifal indeed has a very important role. Uh, what is important here is, you know, unique, of course, with Wagner is not only that Wagner himself was really a central figure of, of, of music in the 19th century, but Wagner determined all the details of the score. That means Wagner did not write, as many other opera composers, create his works, you know, with, with librettists. He wrote his own librettos. He wrote all the details of the score. I'm talking about, first, of course, the basis of Wagner's music, when comes the the libretto, then comes the description of the set, and then comes the description also set, you know, the decoration, whatever, and then the precise description of the action. What is the meaning even of, of, of the different scene, which is very complex, and that means this man wanted really to dominate all the details. So Wagner in that sense also really in this, it's very important, because normally uh, an important composer like Verdi, whoever you take, they had their liberties. There was a discussion on that. Wagner had to decide everything by himself because he could not get even along because of his very special, even sometimes authoritarian character. So we see this one page which shows really here already one of these very important points. Then um, let's see the next slide, please. So here I'm showing you especially also uh, a very clear description referring for Parsifal. I talked to you, I hope it's not <coughs> too tiny for you. Uh, when I talked about details like what is going on scene, you see here there's a light is coming in the holy grail is, is blooming and you see uh, even, you know, the detail of that, there's, uh, the, the, one talks about the dove which comes from sky, which I think also for you or for Malta, also, uh, the discussion on Christianity, what's all about Christianity, I think is of special interest. Let's see the next slide, please. Here, Dove, exactly. Let's, let's see here, which is very important. Wagner, uh, as, as I told before, uh, wrote his libretto. But it, it, he did not only write the libretto, but he also wrote, he started to develop a concept. So he developed ideas, so, so we see here the first, the first original draft of Parsifal, already from 1865. Typical for Wagner is that it took him normally, especially for his late works, a very long period. Wagner really developed even, though, for example, Parsifal from 60, 65, 1865, till coming to the 80s to develop his concept. But Wagner was not, not not enough, was not enough only to write all the details of the score. Wagner wanted to determine very clearly what's all about his theoretical, even later on, uh, ideological idea. So we have to see the next uh, 
image to 